All right, y'all, we're gonna roll through um, just a really quick um, lower body leg strength workout, um, kind of specifically tailored towards cyclists. A lot of times um, on the bike, we don't work the backs of our legs, we work the fronts of our legs, like our quads quite a bit. Um, we are gonna do some, uh, some exercises that do engage the quads and the hips, um, but um, mostly these exercises are gonna be like a lot of hinges that really engage the hamstring. Um, so one exercise that's really good to, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna roll through this with both, uh, with both a kettlebell as well as a set of adjustable dumbbells. Um, so even if you have just some lighter weights, you know, hand weights like this, um, you can use pretty much anything. Um, so a really, really good sort of warm up exercise to get, to, to get the, you know, to get the quads and the hips and the hamstrings all engaged is a goblet squat. So a goblet squat is kind of a wet, wide stance, maybe a little bit wider than, um, than your shoulders. Um, and then you're just going to kind of squat down, bringing your arms inside of your elbows. Um, so you can really just like warm up with no weights, just to kind of get your form, get your butt stuck out. Kind of run through that real quick just to kind of get your um, to get your form locked in um, and then the kettlebell you would hold it like this get your feet a little bit wider than shoulders uh, toes pointed out a bit and then same movement and you really can't go too low but don't you know don't go you know so low that it you know, becomes terribly uncomfortable or painful. And then straight back up, down, and then back up. You wanna keep your chest out and proud. Really just try to hinge at the hips and up. Um, if you have a dumbbell, essentially kind of carry it the same way, right? Um, so if it's a dumbbell like this, or if you have a smaller dumbbell, you can hold it like that. But the movement is the same. Now, kind of, you know, have your elbows, you know, tap the inside of your knees, back up, down, and up. Just like with the kettlebell, you keep your chest up and proud, and back up. So that's our goblet squat. Um, second is deadlift. Deadlift is sometimes it looks like somebody is doing you know something similar to a squat, uh, but the intention is really to hinge at the hips, engage hamstrings and glutes, and depending upon your flexibility, you may not even get the weight all the way down to the ground between reps. Um, but you don't necessarily want to bend your knees. You really want to um, hinge at the hips. And when you get, you know, hinged down this far, chest up, you will, you should really feel it like stretch in the back of your hamstrings. Um, so you can kind of get warmed up, get into your movement just by hinging at the hips. And then once you feel like you have that movement down and you have that good stretch in your hamstrings, then you can grab some weights. And you're just going to get your shoulders, this time, you know, just shoulder width, maybe a little bit narrower than shoulder width, but your weight's kind of like right in front of you. And then to get your weights, you might have to, you know, to get them off the ground, you might have to bend your knees a little bit to get down there. But once you get them up, you know, kind of let them hang there, feel your hamstrings engage, chest up, and then stand up. Down, like I said, with your knees locked out and your chest up, you shouldn't necessarily need to get the weight all the way down to the ground. So chest up, stand up, and up. So that is our dumbbell deadlift. 
Um, you've probably also seen maybe at a gym or you know on videos or whatever um, of using um, like a barbell, like a long barbell with plates on the end to do deadlifts. And think about like when you have you know 45 pound plates on the dumbbell, where that bar is going to be. It's going to be pretty close to like where your natural position is, um, you know, with a good you know hinge form. Maybe a little bit lower to grab it, but then to rack it back up um, at a good height. So uh, deadlifts, um, awesome for the hamstrings and glutes. Uh, another one of my favorite exercises is just a single leg deadlift. Uh, also in yoga called a warrior three. And that's where you do basically the same movement only with one leg. And you can do that unweighted and then you can kind of level it up once you build some strength and flexibility and balance, particularly with a single leg, you can kind of move it up to a weighted single leg deadlift. A little bit harder than it looks. Um, a third exercise um, for, uh, for our lower body, for our legs, for cyclists, that is really, really good because it engages, um, it engages the hips, it engages quads, you know, hamstrings, kind of our whole like lower body complex is um, a single leg lunge. So you start, you know, just in a regular standing position and then it's just literally just taking a big step forward, tap in the back knee and then back up. Forward, tap the knee, back up. You don't need to go way out, right? But you also don't want to take like a little baby step. You just want to do something to where you kind of comfortably get down you can see my back leg is at a 45 degree angle and then my front leg is almost like at the same like opposing 45 degree angle or 90 degree angle sorry um, so once again you know kind of do it with no weights just to get your form down you know kind of kind of feel it in you know get that groove on both legs and then you can go ahead and progress to you know grabbing some weights that are appropriate size for you and it's really nice to have a weight on each side just to have good counterbalance but essentially doing the same exact thing and when you do these in a circuit um, you can either alternate so you can go like left foot forward right foot forward um, or you can just bang out you know um, you know, 10 left foot forward and then switch, you know, 10 right foot forward. Um, if you have kettlebells, you do the same thing. Just put a kettlebell in each hand so you have some good counterbalance. And then once again, down and back up. And it takes a little while to kind of find like what your perfect stride is to, you know, to get into a good lunge where you're legs end up at a nice 90 degree angle but you'll find it um another really good one and this kind of it almost feels like um like that uh single leg or double leg deadlift again it's called a good morning and you can do this and you, pro you, can, you can progress up to like a weighted good morning to where you know maybe instead of like a broomstick or a i'm using a, a paint like extension rod um you can you know progress up to uh having weights you know like on your you know on your shoulders you know holding weights up here and bending down but it's essentially the same type of a hinge motion that we did in you know in a dumbbell so uh, get your you know, your, your feet just a little bit wider than, than uh, shoulder length apart, you know, put something across your shoulders. And the biggest thing for having this across your shoulders like this is it kind of forces you to like keep your chest up and proud, which is gonna force your hips back. Um, so broomstick or paint stick or some sort of stick, you know, over your shoulders, and then just focus on pushing your hips back, like your butt back towards the back wall and then keeping your chest forward. And once again, just hinging over to the point to where you feel like a really good stretch 
and your hamstrings, and then back up. Over, back up. Inside. So you keep my chest out. Now I'm just going down far enough to where my legs, my knees are still locked out. And right here, I really can't go any further. I could if I like let my body collapse, but you really want to try to maintain that structure in the back of your legs and then back up. Um, and then the fifth and final exercise. Um, this is one that is a great um, you know, hip flexor uh, and glute uh, activation um, uh, exercise, just a kind of a standard kettlebell swing. Um, so we've probably all seen, you know, kettlebell swings or variations of them. Um, it is, it's a little more like of a complicated movement um, because it's so dynamic than, than it might look. Um, but it's one of those things that once you, once you sort of get the feel of, you know, of what a kettlebell swing should, you know, should look or feel like, um, it's a great exercise. Um, so, and it is, it is somewhat difficult to do with a regular dumbbell. Now you can try with a regular dumbbell, you know, hold it like you would a kettlebell and, you know, swing like this, or, you know, even holding it sideways, you can kind of get the same, you know, the same movement. Um, but a, ke a, a kettlebell, and I would recommend, you know, if you're going to invest in some weights, you know, get a uh, 16 kilo or 35 pound kettlebell, you know, get something smaller, you know, like a 15 or 20 pound kettlebell. Those are two like really good um, varieties and sizes. Um, but with a swing, once again, kind of in that same like foundational setup, right? Our feet are a little bit wider than our hips or than our, than our shoulders. Um, point it out just ever so slightly. You, don't, you just don't want to point it in. You want your knees in kind of a comfortable, comfortable spot. Um, and then you want the kettlebell to be roughly about like a foot in front of your toes. And then kind of get that same hip hinge and you reach down, grab the kettlebell, let it tip back just a little bit. And then when you start a kettlebell, you know, a set of kettlebell swings, the first movement is called the hike. So kind of like in football, you know, think of the center, like hiking, you know, the ball back to the quarterback. If you're a ball sports guy, my Wendy would get a kick out of hearing me talk about football. Um, but the first movement is just to hike it back and then up. And the most important part of a kettlebell swing is that momentum of the kettlebell swinging up does not come from your arms. This is not an arm workout. You know, think about your arms just kind of being like a pendulum and the momentum from that kettlebell swinging up, it comes from your hips. So when you have the kettlebell back, the movement is really to straighten your legs and shoot your hips forward. And that is what propels your arms off of the, off of the inside of your thighs and up to about that, you know, that, that horizontal or perpendicular uh, level. So once again, kind of get your feet where they need to be, you know, a little bit wider than shoulders width apart, you know, loose, loose upper body, hinge over, reach down, grab the kettlebell, let it tip back towards you a little bit so that your arm is in the same plane as the kettlebell, and then hike it back and then hips forward, hips forward, hips forward, hips forward, and then release. So those are the five exercises um, that I recommend to a lot of my athletes for either during season with lighter weights, higher reps, um, or in off season, we can use a lot of these same exercises in heavier weights and lower reps to build kind of core um, strength in our, in our legs and lower bodies. Um, so just to review, the goblet squat. Okay, so grabbing your grabbing your kettlebell or your dumbbell here, squat down. This one exercise. Um, second is a dumbbell or kettlebell uh, deadlift. Like 
that. Second, or the third is a dumbbell or kettlebell single leg lunge. So forward, forward. Uh, the fourth are good mornings. And good mornings are not that terribly difficult, especially if they're not weighted. So it kind of gives you a little bit of break between um, exercises in a circuit, just to kind of keep those hamstrings engaged. And then last but not least, um, our favorite full body, lower body exercise can be kettlebell swing. So those are my five exercises for cyclists to build lower body strength uh, in the off season. See you guys later.